Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will look at optimizing the length of the dry period. Brand new concept in transition cow management. Let's take a historical view on length of dry period. DHI data would suggest that 45 to 70 days was kind of the optimum dry period. Less than 45 days, we were giving up several thousand pounds of milk. And over 70 days, we tended to have more fat cow metabolic disorders. However, this research was not based on controlled studies. Rather, we simply took cows, looked at days and milk, and summarized the data. And in essence, we may have gotten some incorrect information. Based on some earlier work, it takes about 15 days, supposedly, for the mammary gland to involute or to dry off. Some people will call that involution. The other guideline number was it takes about 15 days for the cow to regenerate the mammary gland, called lactogenesis, and to form colostrum, or called colostrogenesis. And then we'd have probably about a 30-day resting period where the mammary gland in the cow was resting, recouping, adjusting for other factors. However, this now is being challenged by researchers from Wisconsin, Arizona, and Florida. So let's take a look at this pre-fresh period length. Generally speaking, from 60 days prior to calving to 21 days before calving, we'd have cows in the far-off dry cow period. We'll talk that nutrition a bit later. From 21 days to zero was the pre-fresh dry cow period. And then, of course, once the cow is calved, she moves into the lactating or the milk production group for about 350 days, as we now tend to have longer lactations. We also know that the cow has to stay in the pre-fresh group at least 9 to 10 days to have that benefit when we make those dietary changes. If we look at some work from California, this clearly indicates what impact short pre-fresh periods will have. First, we see in group of first lactation cows, 20 cows, they average 24,639 pounds of milk. In the short pre-fresh group, less than nine days, 31 cows fell in that category. You can say they dropped down to average about 21,700 pounds of milk. Therefore, if the young cows are not in the pre-fresh group for at least nine to 12 days, we're going to give up nearly 3,000 pounds of milk production. We then look at the second lactation cows, and again, we can see that same trend, but not quite as pronounced. You can see the milk production we lose there is about 940 pounds. The take-home message is that we must have these cows in the pre-fresh group getting these extra nutrients for at least 10 days or 14, depending on which camp you're in. The reason we need this extra time period is a slide put together by Gary Etzel at Wisconsin. If we use 280 days as a normal gestation period, and we back up about nine days, you can see that only those cows on the right side would benefit from a 10-day transition period, which is about 76% of the cows. You'll notice because cows freshen early, or because they have twins, or the gestation period on Holsteins are actually a couple days shorter than the book would indicate, nearly 25% of the cows do not benefit from a 10-day transition period. And that's why most of us are saying they need to be on this transition diet for at least 21 days to be sure we catch these stragglers or early calving cows. So now we'll look at the new concept, and that is the shortened or shorter dry period. And now you can see instead of the 60-day dry period, our cows are only going to be dry 30 days. And let's take a quick look at this to see what it has in terms of its impact on first lactation cows and second and greater lactation cows. Some very recent work from Wisconsin illustrates the impact. Dr. Grummer and his group at Wisconsin looked at three different groups. Those cows that were dry 56 days, having a two-group dry cow transition program. Very typical what's going on here in the Midwest and other parts of the United States. The second group had 28 days dry. Once the cow became dry, she went right into the fresh cow protocol. And then we had a group of cows that were zero-day dry. We milked them right straight through. And what did we find out? Well, the research came out and said, that basically because we milked these cows literally an extra 28 days, the farmer realized nearly 928 pounds more milk to sell in the current lactation. There was really no change in body condition score because remember these cows were still getting the milk production or the low group ration or whatever they were receiving at that time. An interesting side point was that these cows dropped down to a minus 10 mcals at two weeks after calving which was not nearly as drastic as the 56-day dry cows, and they produced about 2 pounds less milk by day 70 after calving. So if you extended that for 300 days, you can see that we'd be losing about 600 pounds of milk corrected for fat content, 
So a net gain of probably about 300 pounds of milk. We then go to the zero dry days, we see more dramatic things happening. In this situation here, we got more milk because we have another 28 days to milk or 1,628 pounds more milk before calving. Nice income if you're getting 12 or 13 cents per pound for milk. Again, the good news was there was no change in body condition score. In other words, all these cows, 56, 28, and 0, had the same body condition score, but 12 pounds less milk per day for those cows after calving at day 70. So if you multiply that by 300, now you can see that we're going to give up in excess about 3,000 pounds of milk, and that's a lot of milk to give up. The good news, though, is that the energy balance was much more favorable since these cows never switched diets. They only went down to a minus 2 mcals at week 2 and then became a positive in energy balance. So we didn't have this big drop in energy intake after calving. So then let's look at what would be the advantage of a short, dry period. Well, one very obvious advantage would be there would be one less pen to move cattle through or actually giving us more room in the calving area. So I no longer would need a far-off dry cow program. Once I got the cow to dry off, and a lot of researchers would indicate it would take three to five days for the cow to stop producing milk, pulling her off of BST, taking her off of grain, switching diets, putting in a different pen or social arrangement. Number two, in those facilities that are overcrowded in dry cows, we now could take both pens, a far-off and close-up, combine them into one pen, and double the available size, increasing cow comfort and feed bunk availability. And we would get more total milk, especially on the 30-day period, using the Wisconsin numbers, but realizing that we would get less milk on average per cow per day in the subsequent lactation. Remember, we got nearly 900 pounds of milk in the former lactation, but then we gave up two pounds per day after calving. The net effect is we had more milk, but it was spread out just a little differently. And of course, for every advantage, there are disadvantages. Certainly, we would know that we'd have to be really certain what the breeding dates were. Because if we miss a breeding date, then we aren't going to be able to get the 9 to 10 to 15 days in the close-up period that we'd like to have when these cows are in 30 days. Now, obviously, if you're going to milk them straight through, that, that is not a problem. A second question would be the long-term effects on body condition score. The early Wisconsin data would indicate that these cows still had adequate body condition. What would happen if we do this for a second or third lactation? Some long-term studies are really needed. Certainly a huge concern will be drug residue problems. Many farmers would still infuse cows with a short 30-day dry period with a product that may not clear the mammary gland in 30 days. Be keenly aware of this because you could have cows that would cause a residue problem and end up dumping milk or contaminating milk going off the farm. And finally, it's going to take excellent records and management to keep track of these cows because we're really shortening down their timeline. So in summary, at this point, the research would suggest the following. The length of dry period may be shortened down for older cows, down to 30 days. Wisconsin researchers say take it down to 40, see how you like it, then take it down to 30 and work from there. First lactation cows require longer dry periods. Probably it's business as usual here. So these cows probably need the 45 to 60 day dry period. The Canadian researchers would argue they could even use more dry days to recover from this high production in many of our first lactation cows. And finally, each dairy manager will need to find his or her comfort zone with this program to determine where it would be the most economical place to be to make decisions on length of dry period. Maybe on your farm it's 30 and my farm it's 40, or in some farms it may be business as usual, staying with the two-group period. Certainly this is one to watch as more research will be coming down later on in the next couple of years. Thanks. Have a good day.